this is now the mother and child floor. So everything on this floor pertains to um, mother and children. <laughs> So what, what's obtainable in other hospitals here, say in Lagos for instance? How many bays do they have? So this would be possibly one of the larger chemo uh, chemotherapy sections. Mm. Uh, typically most hospitals have a couple of uh, two to four. Mm. But it's not, uh, so this is dedicated total. Mm. So similarly if you, what you saw in dialysis is also dedicated 10 bed dialysis center. Which is not typically available anywhere else. Director of Finance, Admin and Strategy for Evercare Hospital Lekki. Rajiv Bandari, uh, <laughs> CEO for Evercare Hospital Lekki. So, there's no denying the fact that um, there's a market here, right? Um, um, Nigerians spend an average of $1 billion on medical tourism yearly. So, why do you think it has taken so long for an Evercare to come to Nigeria? Well, it's not only really an Evercare, I think it's uh, taken long for anyone to come and I think yeah. one has been obviously uh, you know, the biggest challenge uh, that people face in Nigeria is the instability, uh, economic instability and I think that is one challenge that needs to be overcome. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think somehow we fought that, we've mm -hmm. created the way and mm -hmm. let's hope others follow. Hmm. That's very bold, <laughs> very very bold. And I think the, the, there's a nuance in the sense that we're opening Evercare with the backdrop of a global pandemic. And so that presents its unique set of challenges, but also opportunity. I think for the first time, people have woken up to the centrality and the importance of healthcare as a sector. So historically, investors have shied away from healthcare, have been more focused on financial services and more sort of low hanging fruit in sectors where you know the payback and the return on invested capital is more obvious. But I think what the pandemic has shown is that as a country, you're exposed if you don't, you haven't invested in adequate healthcare infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I think globally you've seen a renewed focus on healthcare as an investable sector. Um, there's a lot of technology advancements that are also increasing the accessibility of healthcare like telemedicine and the likes. And so aside from what we've been able to do in terms of bringing healthcare to this market, we think we'll see a lot more institutional capital going into the healthcare sector. And the hope is that you know, Nigeria needs a hundred Evercares. <laughs> yeah, know, exactly. It's a, it's a drop yeah, in the yeah. ocean. Even a hundred aren't enough. So Even I think a hundred is not we enough. We really need to grow the sector, grow the industry. I think that's, that's, that should be the goal. It's not about competition or anything at all over here. It's about growing the infrastructure. And I think we hope more and more people do that. Absolutely. Let's talk about talent now. You, you already alluded to that earlier, but I need to ask that question again. So you know, of course, in Nigeria, we're, we're battling with brain drain. And um, it's been more pronounced now than ever, especially with doctors and nurses living. So you know, you, you guys are more or less competing with you know the best hospitals around the world for talent. So I, I need you to help me understand exactly how challenging that is, and the process of you know trying to get the, the best talent for for ever care. Sure. So so I tell you, see, traditionally, if you look at this market. Uh, the problem that was there is what I said earlier also, that the infrastructure was only catered to secondary care or maybe advanced secondary care. Now specialists don't want to work in that environment. They need an infrastructure whereby they get enough patients, enough beds mm. to work in and not in a 20 bed, 30 bed hospital because they will never grow there professionally. Right? So that's why there has been a blend. Now with a facility like this coming up, we actually offer that opportunity for clinicians to actually grow professionally with them. You know, everyone has a share of space in the facility. So, it, one, it is an opportunity uh, for us to call back some of the people who have already left the country, uh, offering them opportunity to come and do some good work here. Secondly, it is a good, uh, we plan to get into uh, training and education. Uh, which would also mean we would in future look at certain fellowship programs and all here, mm. uh, which would be bringing up the skill set yeah. internally itself. Mm. Uh, thirdly, now with the group strength, we have the capability of tying up within the group to offer training programs, so send people out in six-month fellowships, uh, and this is nursing as well, not only doctors. 
So nursing can go for three month uh, fellowship programs, uh, doctors can go for six months on hand training and come back, and which helps them then remain back in the country. Uh, other than that, uh, we are also going to be tying up with various Nigerian diaspora groups who have been wanting to do work in this country, but unfortunately haven't been able to do to infrastructure issues. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, already in advance talks with a couple of mm -hmm. groups and we would be getting possibly the best uh, diaspora doctors in to this country to work on a visiting basis. Mm -hmm. And one of the other nuances to add that comes from the fact that we are a local healthcare facility that's part of a much bigger global platform is the fact that we are able to find the best local talent and partner them with international experts. So even where we bring international experts in, we're focused on how do we leverage that skill set to then upskill the local talent. I think we recognize that we will always have that challenge where your best talent is being poached by the UK or the US because there's globally a strategic desire to attract the best healthcare talent and nursing talent. But to the extent that we have ongoing training, uh, we can then ensure that we're building a local pipeline. So exactly. even, and when we, even when we lose those people mm -hmm. to the international market, yeah, we have a deep pipeline of people that are ready to step up and take that space. Mm -hmm. So it's all about a continuous program of skilling, upskilling, partnering local with global international experts, and creating a long-term pipeline, which benefits, by the way, not just us, but the country at large and the entire ecosystem. Mm. So Evaca is also 100% funded by private equity investors, right? Is, I mean, what's the unique advantage of that? And is there any other project um, or a similar setup? So see, on that front, the, the, the opportunity is that the private equity, whenever they see an opportunity, they're willing to invest, they're willing to grow that sector and segment. Uh, plus, we are from a background of impact. And these are impact, 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 yeah. impact fund. So it's a part of an impact fund. Now when you talk about an impact fund, the idea is to create sustainable health care. Uh, and that's why we invest in uh, emerging markets. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole reason here. Uh, if things go well, uh, there's never no to a plan of going ahead. But it's all dependent on how things go. Well, the nuance of us is, this is a long-term patient capital mm -hmm. play. It was a group of the world's leading development financing institutions, um, the likes of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, coming together to say, how do we transform healthcare ecosystems in this market? We've been at this since 2017, so you can see it's patient capital. The other beauty is that the private equity capital that sits behind us, they have extensive experience and skill set in building healthcare facilities and operating healthcare facilities both in developed markets and in developing markets. And so we're able to leverage that expertise, that yeah. know-how yeah. into saying, this is what best in class looks yeah. like. Yeah. But also you partner that with local experts who understand the market mm -hmm. and say, okay, how do we really refine a best in class model mm -hmm. for the local market? Mm -hmm. Somebody asked a question earlier about affordability and accessibility and all of that. So in my mind, I, do, I was just thinking, I said, well, you guys are invested in India. India, I know now Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world, but before 2018, before the Brooklyn Institution report confirming that it was India. So if you could succeed in India, then, I mean, if people could access your healthcare in India, then why not in Nigeria? So what are the lessons, what, can you expatiate on the lessons that you have learned from India that is applicable in Nigeria that you also would like to run with here? See, that again, help, you know, yeah, I that think the biggest, you. biggest uh, is not a lesson, I think it's mm -hmm. a learning and more from the Nigerian market is to see that you know, scalability is very important to bring about accessible healthcare. Now, when you run a 20 or a 30 bed hospital, mm -hmm. uh, there is only an X amount of utilization you can do. Uh, and to get the best returns on those utilizations, you actually price yourself high. Uh, when you have this yeah. infrastructure of scale, yeah. you know, it helps you reach out to more people yeah. uh, because you need to utilize your equipment, you need to sweat your assets mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. facility. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that is to be, to be more accessible, mm -hmm. more value-based. 
see, I don't like to use the word affordable because affordable is a very relative term. I agree. Uh, because I, I like so the point that was made earlier that no one can truly afford healthcare out of pocket. That's absolutely. Yeah, that's why I need health insurance. So, so, so these are all things that are related to the cost of healthcare vis-a-vis the output of it. So I think that that's what the biggest learning is. So I think scalability is going to change a lot of things uh, with us being here and with how people access it.